a daily routine along Mumbai streets. The city's famous dabawalas packing up home-cooked lunches ready to be delivered. They're used to plying the roads, but this weekend, the pedestrian task is tinged with sorrow. We were so upset to hear the queen was gone, this Dabawala says. His group has a close bond with the royals, having met the then Prince Charles and the queen herself. She was kind and welcoming, he says. But that warm feeling is not universal in this country. At Mumbai's Gateway of India, built for a British king and the spot where the final British troops left this land, any regard for Queen Elizabeth is clouded by the scars of a brutal colonial past. They ruled over us for so many years and they did so many wrong decisions and so many cruelty they did. But after her death, she's also a human being. It's, it's kind of bittersweet, mostly, I think, sweet. <laughs> The UK's longest reigning monarch never ruled over India, crowned several years after the former colony's independence. But as head of the Commonwealth, the young queen visited the young republic in 1961 to a rapturous welcome. Scenes from the past that feel far removed for many in today's India. This iconic Mumbai train station used to be called Victoria Terminus, but has been Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus for years now. It's one example among many of the attempts to erase the signs of a painful colonial past in the decades since India became independent, a goal that's an even more urgent priority for the current government. Yet another symbol is set in one of the crowns owned by Queen Elizabeth, causing rancor in the souls of many Indians. The Koh Noor, taken from India and now part of the crown jewels, is trending on Twitter. Many here desperately want it back. Because it is something which is ours, and they have already taken so much from our people. A wish shared by a fair number in the country, even on a day reserved for mourning the queen of India's former colonial masters. Salima Shivji, CBC News, Mumbai.